Uh, right. Speaking of choosing what to wear on race wow. day, yes. preparing for the big 26.2. So, Caitlin, tell us a little bit about tell, tell us a little bit about what you got going on this weekend. All right. Uh, well, I'm an ultra runner, just so you guys know, a trail runner at heart, and I decided to take on the White Mountains Marathon in New Hampshire. So I'm doing a road marathon. I've been training pretty darn hard the past four months and am nervous as can be, even though running 100Ks, 100 milers, 80Ks, the marathon to me is just such a hard event. I've only done two beforehand. It is just, I think, one of the most difficult events that, I mean, it's just so hard. The effort level that you run at, pounding the pavement, um, but I'm excited about it. But yeah, it's Sunday, Sunday, 6 a.m., and I'm not thrilled about the, for- about the forecast. It looks like about in the 40s and rain. Oh, boy. I'm going to pull oh a Dez. I need to I'm bring in a jacket. I was going to say, yeah. pack the jacket. So let's yes. get into it. Let's talk a little bit about it here. All right. Okay. So uh, let's do like a little bit of like, you know, let's stick to our namesake here. This is like a little bit of, this is a, a chapter one of the end chapters of the marathon handbook, right? Is the, <laughs> yeah. the pre-race prep, uh, yep. by Caitlin Tossi. Uh, so okay. taper, how long do you taper for? Okay. I, I do a three week taper. Oh, a long one. Okay. Yeah. I do do a three week taper. We probably have like a, well, probably did a 34 K longest long run peak week, long run jump down to a 24 K the following week. And this past weekend, uh, a 20 K. So, you know, and dur- yeah. during the week, you know, kept the intensity up um, pretty similarly to all the weeks. You know, I'm, I'm one of those believers as well with the methods of keeping the intensity up and lowering the volume. And so still been doing plenty of, you know, some threshold stuff, some marathon pace stuff, um, but bringing down the volume little by little. Maybe by this past week, it's, I've gone down about 30 percent, I'd say, to about 70 percent since peak week. Nice. OK, yeah. so. Yeah, so that like, yeah, there's sort of like three weeks, two weeks. I've tried yeah. 10 days before. I've tried Whoa. sort of like okay. coming hard off the mountain and just yep. like sliding right into the marathon. And how did you that do actually, on that one? It did actually worked out okay. Okay. I, in the last, I'd say five or six years, gone back to doing a two week taper. That's, okay. I just find most comfortable around two weeks. So, um, but very similar to you, kind of like, Two weeks out, two weeks out, I'm still doing a, a 20 mile long run. Yep. And then uh, I, might, I might just do like 30K two weeks out. And then uh, okay. one week out, I do the, yeah, about 20K. About 20, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, I think that's like one of the, a, a smart approach. And it, I hear this time and time again, sort of like 20K half marathon the week before. Yeah. You're well trained, should feel relatively easy. Usually it's just a straight, like easy run you don't throw it uh, did you throw any any spice into your long run at all a few or? just a f- you know a couple kilometers here and there of marathon pace just to kind of get the legs moving speed it up feel the pace um but not not a lot not a large just a, a couple kilometers maybe like six or eight altogether uh well, about say no i think six yeah so it was a pretty small percentage maybe like a little over 25 percent okay so race week and this is yeah. what wonderful timing because you've just like, <laughs> gone through most of this um <laughs> yeah and the week leading up, you still do a workout on uh, race week? You, you still throw in something like a kind of a, a lighter workout maybe? Yeah. Um, Tuesday, Tuesday, I did do a little bit of uh, marathon pace. It's so like zone two stuff. I did um, marathon pace. And then today, I just went out and did 8K with some strides. Maybe like every five minutes, I did about a 20-second stride. Nothing too strenuous. I felt really good. Um, and I don't want to push it. But I think the taper was good enough for me to kind of get back down to baseline. As always, I think for all of us racers out there, like you always think, am I going to recover? Like, because I was feeling heavy legs up until today, I feel. Uh, now, now today I felt pretty good. So you just have to trust the process. The taper works. But man, it was stressing me out. <laughs> oh, so you, you like the taper madness is real for you. It's like it's something that hits yeah. you race week. You're kind of like cl- climbing the walls. Oh, You're yeah. like, why do my legs feel this way? Yep. This hurts. That hurts. If I drop my volume so much, why do I still feel this way? I'm tired. I'm fatigued. Am I eating enough? Oh, yeah. I mean, even with all the experience, I feel I would like to say, oh, no, I'm super confident. I feel amazing. I'm ready to go. But you know, to be to be honest, I'm. I think I have you know the pre-race anxiety. Now, if I were going into a trail race, I'd probably be fine. <laughs> <laughs> but going into this marathon, I I just am putting the pressure on myself to have a great race. So it's um yeah, 
I'm, I'm yeah, feeling it's like it, one of the one of the tricky things about road running and about the marathon in particular because it's like because it's very like uh, exact and measured, yep. and you're going often you're motivated by and going in with a specific time goal or like a big number like you know sub this or sub that yep. right um yeah. it's it's just everything is on a much more fine sharp edge yep. so race week when do you start carb loading yeah i i do the you know the acute carb load thing just a couple of days i don't really like to do you know i think it's kind of falling out of of fashion to do, you know, the, the week carb load, the six day, the five day carb load. Yeah. I've always kind of done, you know, just a few days. And I think now I'm going to more focus on it. Like the three days out, just kind of interchange, like change some of my protein and fat for some carbs instead of like adding a lot of extra, because I also, you know, you want to be so careful about not overdoing it and overeating and, you know, retaining a lot of fluid and all that kind of stuff from the extra carbs. So I'm going to kind of switch out and kind of focus more on carbs, you know, take out the fiber, that, that, that all, anything that could, you know, kind of mess with my stomach a few days out. And then the 48 hours, 36 hours out, think about like adding, you know, just a few more carbs, a few more portions of carbs in uh, for those couple of days, a little more hydration, electrolytes, that kind of stuff. But I also don't want to overdo it. Um, I have a very funny photo. I should have pulled it up for this podcast, but I didn't think about it. Uh, I have a very funny photo of me running a um, 100k race here in Costa Rica you know it's super humid and hot uh, where this race was out by the beach and I decided to drink just a ton of electrolytes and water the three days leading up and literally I'm smiling in a photo and my eyes like one cheek is just like completely puffed like the cheeks are puffed up <laughs> like the eyes are closed I absolutely overdid it I must have weighed like five pounds more. Oh which is really super yeah. dangerous right like yeah, hyponatremia I mean, is real right it's a very dangerous thing yeah it is. And I, I didn't feel bad. I think maybe I had enough salt and that sort of stuff, you know, the electrolytes and the sodium and all that as well. But I just overdid it. And ever that was a long time ago. That was like eight years ago. So ever since then, I'm very careful about just like, you know, making sure I'm well hydrated, not like adding in this ton of other stuff, just kind of focusing on it instead of overdoing it or underdoing it. So. Yeah, the carb load is both, I think, essential and a very real thing that has a deep and profound positive impact on your performance on race day. But it's also something that is very tricky to pull off because you can definitely overdo it. You can definitely like throw yourself off, right? Like gorging on bagels and uh, uh, (laughs) cookies cookies and nibs and m&ms and whatever the heck else you like enjoy that's my weakness cookies yeah yeah and just you've got license to eat as many damn cookies as you can fit in your mouth right and and that can really throw things off although there is there is like a metric i believe it's eight grams of of uh carbs per kilogram of weight of your body weight um that's like your the uh this the the stat line you need to go by when you're trying to carb load for a couple of days before the race and actually hitting that number is really hard it's like it's pretty intense it's a really weird feeling and like i always say to someone who's new to marathoning like if you're doing it right you're gonna look at that bag of m&ms by like saturday midday and you're just gonna be like i I hate (laughs) m&ms i never want to eat m&ms again Uh, and if you're doing, and if you're getting that emotional response, you're doing it right. Um, <laughs> but you you're shouldn't be enough. like your stomach shouldn't be flipping and you shouldn't be wrecked. Right. Um, it's yep. again, a fine line. Okay. So there's a fine line. Yep. When you shut the carb load down, like Saturday at some point, like midday yeah, or um, mid- Saturday night after the you know, Saturday night, I'll eat a very early dinner and I'll eat pasta. But again, I just, I watch the portions. I really don't overdo it. I just kind of probably get myself, uh, you know, well fed, Um, I don't, and I don't mix in any protein or other stuff that, or vegetables or anything like that. That night, I know that there are some, some, uh, nutrition coaches and nutritionists who do keep the protein in. Uh, I I don't, I I just take out anything that I think might, uh, mess with my digestion or stomach at all. And I just do like the pure, you know, simple carbs, pasta, pasta, like, you know, pasta dinner the night before and my bagel and bagel and honey the three hours before the race and then bring, you know, like a gel along or a waffle, one of those like honey stinger waffles, yum. Another great excuse, excuse to eat sweets. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of like on the bus ride over to the start line. That's, that's my plan. So my stomach's not so empty. 
and then you know I'll do the gels during and that's another that's another one another uh, topic for another day is also like the in-race fueling I feel like people tend to you know the ideal or the equation to figure out your carbs you know if you think about carbs uh, you should have one carb per kilo per hour of racing that's also really hard for some people uh you know to stomach uh and so uh, it's just really on a person-to-person basis i feel um those equations help a lot to get a ballpark and then you just kind of go you know figuring it out as you go along to see what what works for you I got a hot take about that, but I'll leave yeah. it for a second when we get into the race. Okay. Um, and I understand that I'm kind of the exception of the rule here, okay. but I'll, I'll oh, unpack it for you and, and get your reaction. Um, so, yeah, in terms of just like planning, like you strike me as an A-type person. We've worked together for a while. Uh, <laughs> you're very organized. You're an editor. You're a yes. good like sort of like you're a good sort of behind the scenes editor. You <laughs> you're very accurate with everything are you like a checklist person are you uh lay are you a lay all the kid out the night before and make the big plan person do you have like goals written down abc goals like how do you approach all of the organizing of of marathon day okay well yes yes and yes and those are all great yes the checklist i've had written for a week like my new checklist for this for this race but i also have checklists that i send out to my athletes like if they need help planning for a race and all of that but yeah checklist absolutely i'll use it tonight when i pack uh because i'm flying out tomorrow and okay laying out all of the like my uniform and the bib and all that stuff i do do it but i don't take a photo of it oh uh, yes <laughs> yeah. the flat lay the flat lay the flat lay i do you know i do lay everything out of course because uh, tomorrow i need to be at the bus, you know, at the buses because we have to bus in uh, to the start line. It's a point-to-point course. And so we have to bus into the start line and we have to be at the where the buses take off from between 3.15 and 4.15. So my stuff is going to be all ready, out to go. So I just wake up, eat, and then can go and get ready right away. I am very organized. Like I don't like running around at the last minute trying to find something and, you know, take off without my headphones or without, you know, something like that. So yes, my, my, my things will be laid out and uh, ready to go in the morning. So you're, n- you're not buying a new pair of shoes the day before at the expo. That's Absolutely for damn sure. Not. Mm. I might, but I won't use them in the race. <laughs> yes, there you go. You might have you find a good deal. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So race day itself, like, um, I think the mental, emotional element of racing is under explored. It's something that I... I've talked to quite a few runners about over the years. It's something I think about a lot, which is like how you mentally prepare for this like really big challenge. And I don't care how well prepared you are physically for a marathon. The place your mind and your heart goes in the last 10 K of a marathon (laughs) can be. Wow. Yeah. So like, how do you prepare for that? Like that last 10 K of a marathon? Like what's your, what's your approach? Yeah, um, I know that it might sound kind of cheesy, but it works for me. And, um, uh, you know, doing a lot of ultras and really long races, I actually go through a lot of those ups and downs. It's not just like the last 10K, you know, it could happen in kilometer 40, then again in kilometer 60, then again in kilometer 75. And so you're always trying to like fight against against your mind. So I just start thinking about the finish line. Uh, you know, if I have someone who's going to be at the finish line waiting to see people, I often think about my other athletes who are sharing the race with me and think about like how they're doing and try to get motivated and inspired by, you know, this is their first marathon or this is their first race or, you know, trying to think about, I wonder how, how this person's doing and how that person's doing. Um, and I try to smile, which I know, you know, there's all those studies about like, okay, if you smile, maybe you'll feel happier. And, you know, I sing a little bit, I do a bunch of cheesy things, but to me, that's what works. And so, you know, I just kind of take it in stride that way. And I, and I also really think about what I'm going to eat <laughs> and drink when I'm done. <laughs> like that is a huge inspiration to me. And I don't know if that's, you know, nutritionists are probably like rolling their eyes at me, but that's literally what I think. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is going to taste so delicious when I finish the race. Oh, you get like, you get like, like hunger <laughs> fantasies, like uh, with, with a few kilometers ago, you're like, yes, yeah. I would like to. 
yeah. which sort of pizza? Which yeah, place am I going exactly. to go to? Yeah. And the worst thing about it is that usually, you know how it is when you finish those races, especially I know the road marathon, my stomach's going to be, yeah. you know, a mess from pounding and I'm going to finish and I'm not going to want to eat. And then it's going to be like until the following days dinner where I'm actually going to be able to enjoy the food the way that I want to. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't take away uh, the illusion like that I will be able to enjoy that meal. <laughs> One of the great sort of torturous, ironic, cruel moments in running for me is when you cross the finish line, usually at a big American races, but it's a, a lot of races, a lot of marathons around the world now do this where they've got like a beer sponsor in oh, Chicago. Yeah. I ran yeah. a really hard marathon in Chicago in 2022 across the finish line. And then they're just like, here's this Goose Island IPA, <laughs> you know, and I'm just like, that looks awesome. And then I grab it and, and like, I'm super dehydrated. It's yeah. a sunny day. It's starting yeah, to get yeah, warm yeah. outside. Just finished a marathon. I should be celebrating. They hand me like, they give me two beers. I've got one in ice each hand. Cold. I'm like, this is great. They're, yeah, they're ice cold. Just, yeah, just yeah. pulled off the tap and I'm like, oh, amazing. And then I, I go to sit down. I can barely sit because my legs start freezing up. And yeah. then it's just like stomach completely closes. And it's just like not a frigging chance. You're putting that in your body right yeah. now, pal. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's super weird that they do that, but I, I understand the idea behind it, but the actuality doesn't sort of meet the moment. It's yeah. Yeah. I, I need a, like a couple hours until I can. Yeah. Uh, until you can stomach it. Yeah. yeah, totally. I agree. So you're going to New Hampshire. Yep. Live free or die. And you're, uh, <laughs> you're going to run a point to point. Yeah. It's a nosebleed. It's a downhill. Yep. Absolutely. Kay. Yeah. You, you train for the downhills. I did. Um, yeah. Did a couple of long runs here. You know, started point to point, ran downhill, and yeah, it was um, it was a little tough on the quads. But I kind of thank the the trails for that. I kind of thank like the downhill training, doing all the trail running that I do, and you know, lots of hours in the gym. So I'm hoping that they will hold up. My quads will hold up for me uh, hope, during this. I hope like, they do as well. Yeah, please. <laughs> are you are you wearing? Uh, are you wear super shoes? Are you a super shoe person? I have. Okay, this is my first race with super shoes. I'm very excited. Oh yes, I did. I got the Nike Vaporflies, and I love them. <laughs> You've done a couple of runs? Uh, yeah, I did two of my long runs, and I said, okay, I can't do any more because these shoes do not have a very save. long <laughs> shelf life. Save them. Save them. So I did two long runs, love them, absolutely love them. So I am. Go this is going to be my first race with super shoes, so I'm excited about that. Oh, yeah. yeah I, I, one thing I've noticed, and I think it's this has been – uh, talked about endlessly so i'm not breaking any news here but like they really do help with recovery like pre super shoes road marathons really would just absolutely bash my legs post yeah. super shoes they still bash my legs but the recovery times i notice are a little bit quicker oh. um yeah i i, I found use? i a last the last super shoe i ran in was the always the nikes the nike uh vapor fly whatever oh, so okay. Me too. yeah same okay. shoe that you've got you've oh, okay. i had the vapor fly two you've got the third iteration probably the new one if that's okay. what you've, you've gone with I think yeah. So, yeah yeah <laughs> although i'm like um i'm an adidas guy too so i'm curious about oh. the adidas super shoe so yeah. i mean we can we'll nerd out about super shoes in another podcast but yeah, uh, i also want to try the a6 one that alex just reviewed okay oh, yeah that that's looks for phenomenal time. yes, yes. I, i'm yeah. totally into trying those out yeah <laughs> yeah. There may be a pair of those in my house. I don't <gasps> own them. They're my wife's. But, oh, uh, oh that's she, so cool. she had she had positive positive things to say about them. Okay. So okay, I'm curious about them as yeah, well. Yeah, we, we got to try them out. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Okay, so last thing, I'm going to put you yep. on the spot here. Oh boy. You know, because if you say it, then you got to follow through with it. Oh God. What's the goal? What's the plan? Give me a number. Oh, no. Don't don't chicken out on me here. Give me a number. Okay. I'm going to give you the number that I have been training for. Okay. But. I don't know what's going to happen. And uh, anyway, I'm just going to give it to you. I've been training for a 306. I've been training. I've been training for it. Um, the thing is, I'm a, I'm a very positive person. I'm not being negative. I'm being realistic. Uh, mm -hmm. It's been very hard. It's been yeah. very hard. I don't know. Um, but also um, here in Costa Rica, I don't know what has been going on these past two months, but the wind has been out of control. So I don't know if I hit wind in New Hampshire, it'll be the same. But the wind has been just so hard. I feel like running my marathon pace is like running faster than threshold. Like it's just been, it's been hard. So I'm being very, very realistic. And I'm saying, yes, I'm going to push for that 306 because I want it. I've been training so hard. 
Um, but I would be happy, you know, I, I, I would be happy with a, with a 310. I would be happy. Anything that's going to beat my old PR, I would be very happy. I know this is an aggressive goal for me, but I'm going to go in there and give it my all and do my best. And, you know, if I can't, I'll be happy. I got, I got A, B, and C. So I think that's the important thing. Brilliant move. Yeah, always have a backup because yeah. when things go sideways, you can, instead of having no plan, you've got, an, you've got another plan. Yeah. Yeah, could be anything. It could be anything. Could be the weather. I mean, if it's going to be windy and rainy and freezing cold, as it's, as the forecast says, I kind of have to take that into account too. And it might not be the best conditions. I'm usually I'm running in you know, 75 degrees every day here, sunny, um, more humid uh, than it is up there right now. So that's kind of something against me and a lot of wind. So the conditions are going to be very different. Um, and as you know, each race a, a race is a race. You never know how you're going to wake up that day. But I'm going to give it my best. That's for sure. I can't wait for next week's pod to hear oh. the, the, the race report from New Hampshire. 